Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson here. I hope you're having a great day. So we're going to talk about 110.26 in this video. And I got to be honest, pretty much any time we talk about 110.26, change to that section, it's usually going to be a big deal. Uh, 110.26 applies to all electrical equipment. Every single thing you install has to comply with 110.26 because of the definition of the word equipment. And we'll talk about that. So this particular edition, the 2026, uh, the changes on paper don't seem to be quite that big. But as we dig into it, you'll see that one of the changes in particular uh, has the potential of being a really, really big deal. So let's take a peek. Article 110, General Requirements. 110.26 spaces about electrical equipment. The access slash egress obstruction requirements were clarified. And yes, I, I would say that it is a clarification, no doubt about it. You could argue that it's an expansion. You could maybe argue that it already said this. I don't think it did. Uh, but that rule right there, the, the clarification, is a big, big deal. Also, Exposed versus enclosed live parts were better addressed. I love that change. I wish they would have done that 100 years ago. Uh, and then DC voltages were added as well. All right, so let's take a peek at what we have here. 110.26, spaces about electrical equipment. What I've noticed is that when you have a code section that has multiple subsections, A, B, C, D, E, a lot of people, they, they want to skim through A, B, C, or D and figure out which one applies to them, and they only read that. You need to make sure you're reading the language before the A, B, C, D, uh, what I kind of call the, the charging language to that section, right? So 110.26, before you get to A, has this general requirement, and it applies to all equipment. Working space and access to and egress from it are required around all electrical equipment to allow for safe operation and maintenance. All right, so let's take a look at these air conditioner disconnects here. Um, I think we're all going to agree, <clears throat> without reading anything else in the code, I think we're all going to agree that you cannot get to that working space safely. And once you get to that working space, you cannot maintain or operate that equipment safely. Forget three feet and 30 inches and six and a half feet and all of that stuff. The first thing you have to figure out is, can I even operate this equipment safely? If you can't, you don't have to read anything else in the code. You know it does not comply, right? So you need to be able to get to it safely. You need to be able to leave the equipment safely. And you need to be able to operate and maintain the equipment safely. Whether the equipment is energized or not. See, that's the key. A lot of people say that 110.26 only applies to energized equipment. That is 100% wrong. This section does not say anything about whether the equipment is energized or not. It says, listen, you've got to be able to operate it safely. You've got to be able to maintain it safely even if it's shut off. Look at this disconnect. Can I maintain that disconnect safely even if it's de-energized? Well, of course not. You're going to fall to your death, right? So, no. You have to be able to access everything, egress, right, away from it, and operate it and maintain it safely. In the 2020 code, they added this language for large equipment. Open equipment doors must not obstruct access to and egress from the working space. In the 2023, they moved this requirement right here, 110.26. So it doesn't just apply to big equipment, it applies to all equipment, right? Open equipment doors must not obstruct access to and egress from the working space. Now, this is a prime example of a violation, and this needs to be a violation, clearly. Um, and, and especially, you know, when you look at this door right here, you can see with the with the door hardware of the equipment adjacent to it, I, that door would not even open a full 180 degrees. That That's probably about as, op as open as that door gets. You cannot access and egress the working space safely in this picture because those doors have obstructed your uh, access and egress. What if you had to work on that equipment energized because you're measuring voltage, right? I don't condone working energized unless you have to. And when I say you have to, I mean you're measuring voltage, right? You're troubleshooting. You're doing something that you cannot do in the de-energized state. So 
even if you're following all the rules, you're dressed up like an astronaut, you've done everything safe, right? You're, you're in there, you're in your measuring voltage to maybe even, maybe even a dish shut off, right? You've already shut it off and you've applied a lock to it. And now you're going over there to verify that it's shut off until you have verified that it's de-energized. We have to pretend that it is energized. That's still energized work, right? Because maybe you shut off something and you found out that you shut off something that looks just like what you thought you were shutting off. So you have to verify it. So let's just say that you are following all the rules. You're dressed like a man on the moon. You're in there measuring voltage. What if something goes south? Right? What if, what if it does blow up? You, you drop your meter. You, you, one of the screws, when you open the cover, the screws falls out and just one in a million lands on a lug and bounces. If something goes wrong and we have an arc flash, even if you're dressed appropriately, you need to be able to get out of there. Right? You can't do that in this picture. If anything goes wrong in that picture, I mean, let's not kid each other. You're, you're probably not hurt. You're dead. So open doors must not obstruct access to and egress from the working space. Now that's open equipment doors, not open personnel doors. I've had people misunderstand this rule and say that you can't put a panel board behind the swing of a, of a bedroom door, an office door. That's not correct. The open equipment doors is what we're concerned about. Access slash egress is considered obstructed. If one or more equipment doors reduces access to or egress from the working space to less than 24 inches wide or six and a half feet high, when the doors are or can be opened to 90 degrees, that's a big deal. Um, I, I'll give you my opinion for whatever it's worth. <laughs> I, I don't really like this change, um, but I understand why it happened. And, and I could be persuaded. So the, the concern here is, okay, we've got the open door. Let, let's take a look at these. Everybody, I think, that can see this picture is going to say that's a violation. And, and that should be a violation that is unsafe. But what if all of those doors could open 180 degrees, right? Maybe you have piano hinges on them that allow them to open 180 degrees. And with the doors fully open, you have three feet or three and a half feet between these pieces of equipment. Should that be allowed? Or is the fact that they can open 90 degrees, is that enough to say that it's a violation? Should I be able to use piano hinges and fully open the doors as a way out of this requirement? I really go back and forth on this. My heart says, yeah, you should be able to use the piano hinges and open the door 180 degrees. Uh, but Sometimes people don't open them 180 degrees. You know, part of the part of the discussion on the code making panel was that you know sometimes people will put uh, a bucket of tools or something, what you know near the working space where they're working, and that bucket of tools will prevent the door from opening 180 degrees. Uh, and and that may be true. I I could see a person doing that. So I understand both sides of the argument. I really do. And. Uh, I don't know. This is a tough one. This is a big change. It doesn't matter what I think about the rule, right? I, <laughs> why am I even telling you how I feel? It doesn't matter how I feel. This is the rule, right? It's got to have full clearance, 24 inches wide, with the doors open 90 degrees, if they can open 90 degrees, right? So this is a violation. You can see that these two doors would touch each other, whether they can swing all the way open or not. Another example would be these, right? This is a violation regardless of whether these doors can open 180 degrees because with this door open and that door open, I need to have two feet between them. All right, the other thing that changed here, two other things really, 110.26a, now we're talking about equipment that's going to be worked on energized. For equipment likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized, working space must comply with A1 through A4. All right, so it's important to remember, examination includes measuring voltage, right? So if the equipment is likely to have voltage measured there, then 110.26a applies. I think we're all going to agree it applies to panel boards, right? Pretty much without exception. Does it apply to transformers? It could. Depends on the facility. Maybe you're at a facility where, for whatever reason, 
you need to measure voltage at the transformer. I mean, I, I was never compelled to do that. If I want to measure voltage, I'm going to measure it at the panel board, right? But there could be facilities where you have to do that. I don't know. Now, the other question to ask is, what's a transformer? Don't say you need working space in front of a transformer. What's a transformer? We talking about a 5MVA, you know, big green box out in the parking lot? Or we talk about a doorbell transformer. <laughs> you know, so it's not enough just to point it to, 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 to say, hey, disconnects need working space. Well, what about the cord and plug connection under your sink for your disposer? Certainly that doesn't require three feet in front of it. So you got to look at it at a case by case basis, equipment by equipment, site by site. So if equipment likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized, working space must comply with A1 through 4. They added this rule, I guess is the right way to say it. They added it. Really, they relocated it. This allowance was in 110.26A1, which is the depth, right? The three foot or three and a half or four feet, depending on the voltage and, and what's behind you. So these words have been in the code for a long time. If special permission is granted, smaller working spaces are allowed for voltages up to 30 volts RMS, 42 volts peak or 60 volts DC. So there was some discussion about this because like I said, it, it, it was in 110.26A1, which is the wrong place. It's absurd to say that you can reduce the depth, but not the width and not the height, right? I mean, it's either safe or it's not. There was also some discussion about whether this sentence even needs to be in the code, right? As an AHJ, you can always use special permission and waive a requirement as long as you think equivalent safety has been provided. So there are times in the code where the code specifically says you can use special permission for this. I don't know that those need to be there because you can always use special permission. So maybe this sentence should be deleted from the code. Personally, I don't think it should. I think there's spaces in the code where it's worth repeating the fact that special permission is an option. So here I've got a fire alarm control panel. Let's say that that's a 24 volt piece of equipment. Do I really need to have three feet in front of it, 30 inches wide and six and a half feet high? Well, that's going to be up to the AHJ, right? Somebody's going to have to make that determination. If they think that three foot by 30 inches by six and a half feet is more than what you should need, well, then they can allow you to provide less, right, if they want to. So they relocated this, which I think was a good thing. It really was in the wrong place. Now, we still have an informational note here that says, take a look at NFPA 70E, Standard for Electrical Safety in the Workplace. For safe work practices, PPE, arc flash labels, establishing an electrically safe work condition, and other similar topics. I mean, let, let's be honest here. 110.26a is for working energized. How do you work energized safely? Well, you follow NFPA 70E, right? NFPA 70E tells you what to do when you cannot shut it off or when you're in the process of shutting it off, right? It tells you how to dress, lockout, tagout, how to verify absence of voltage, all of that stuff. The other thing that happened here is well, two things. We added AC and DC. Now, you could easily argue that because it didn't specify AC or DC that it applied to both regardless, but now it specifically says AC and DC, the numbers don't change. So clearance in front of equipment must comply with table 110.26A1 for AC and DC voltages unless allowed by A or B. Okay, so this is the depth, right? The three foot, three and a half, four foot. Here's a change that I really like. Distance is measured from the enclosure front or opening if the live parts are enclosed. It used to say this in the table notes, and the table notes are part of the code. They're not informational notes, right? Informational notes are just information. Table notes are part of the rule. So this has kind of always been there, but all of the table numbers say that you measure to the exposed live parts. Okay, well... Where's the exposed live parts in this picture? And the answer is there are none. Now, once I take the panel cover off, I will have exposed live parts, but they're recessed into the panel board, right? They're a couple inches in where the lugs are and the, and the bus bars and everything. So do you measure from those bus bars and those lugs? 
or do you measure from the front of the enclosure? The answer has always been you measure from the front of the enclosure. But why was it so cryptic in the code? Why didn't it just say that right in the text? And I don't know, it just didn't, right? <laughs> and I wasn't the one that fixed this. I can't take the, you know, I, I can't claim responsibility for why this changed, but it probably should have changed a million years ago. I never tried to change it. Maybe I should have. But now it says it the way I think it needs to say it. And it says, look, measure from the front of the enclosure if the parts are concealed, right? If they're, if they're enclosed, I should say. So not really a technical change, but if you're new to the code, it, it, it's better, right? It should say that right in the text. And then in 110.26A5, separation from higher voltage equipment, if equipment rated 1,000 volts AC or 1,500 volts DC or less is in an area with exposed live parts or wiring exceeding those values, then a partition, fence, or similar separation is required. Now, you wouldn't know it just from this picture, but kind of, let me kind of explain where this is. This is, believe it or not, this is in a hotel. Um, it's on the second floor. And you go into this room, you, you, you're in a hotel, right? We've all been in a hotel. You walk down the hallway looking for your room, and sometimes you'll see a little door in the, in the hallway that says electrical room, right? That's what this is. <laughs> so, I don't know. For me, I always check the door, see if it's locked. But um, if it's not, I go in and take pictures. But anyway, you're, imagine you're walking through a hotel. You open the door, and there's this little electrical equipment room, MDP, panel board, and then inside of that room, there's another door. And you open that door and you walk into this room. That's exactly what this is. So this exposed live parts here, the 25,000 volt transformers, is separated from the rest of the electrical room by concrete walls and by a door. If this equipment was in the same room as a panel board, right, then that would be a violation. You've got to have a separation between those, and I think we're all going to agree that that's a good requirement. All right, so there you go, 110.26. Again, I, I don't want to lose sight of the big part of that change because most of it was just clarification. The big part of that change, how do you measure the clearance between equipment when doors can be opened 90 degrees? And the answer is you got to measure it with the doors open 90 degrees, even if they can open <clears throat> 180. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one when we jump into Article 120, which is the new location for load calculations. And we're actually going to spend a lot of time in Article 120 this time because there were a lot of changes to the load calculations. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.